Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to this week's episode of How They Do That. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, this week's episode is a bit of a leap, I have to confess. That's because we're talking to professional skydiver, photographer, and videographer, Craig Amrine. He does all of his photography while jumping out of planes. So here's our talk with Craig Amrine. Well, here we are on the set with Craig Amrine. So Craig, you are a professional skydiver mm -hmm. and in this capacity as a, a videographer, what's your actual title and responsibility? Walk us through a little bit about that. Well, in this capacity, what I, I guess you could call me a professional skydive videographer and photographer. My goal is to get in the right place in the air to, 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 to view the skydive. In some capacities, it's as a, as a uh, competitor where the competition is judged both on the performer as well as the quality of the video that we're doing. And other, and other times I'm out there to get the best shot. So while we shoot video, I'm also shooting stills as well. And so you're, you're actually an award-winning videographer, is that correct? That, that is correct. I've got gold medals in national competition for freestyle videography and, and the world. I've got s silver and bronze medals in world level competition as a, re as a free style videographer. And how do you get started being a, you know, a skydive <laughs> videographer? I mean, it seems to be something that you just don't walk out and do. I, start, I started skydiving, I think, about 18 years ago. And our goal as a skydiver, when you get into the sport, it's, it's, it's expensive. So your goal is to do, what can you do to save money when you're skydiving? And uh, I, was, I was lucky enough to, to, to get fairly accomplished fairly quickly. And it, the... the Videography and photography. I've always enjoyed photography, uh, even before skydiving, and I figured it was a a decent way to get some free skydives and to make a little money. Right. And uh, when I moved out to, to to Arizona, I was fortunate enough to hook up with some very very good skydivers, and they liked what I could do, and so I got hired to to, to film them. And then next thing I know, I get sponsored to compete in the national and the world level. Wow. I would just think that, you know, jumping out of planes is not the time when you want to skimp on, you know, equipment. <laughs> <laughs> like, I yeah. would want the best parachute possible. <laughs> well, <laughs> for, for gear and equipment, we do. I mean, right. I, I, I do a lot of research and I, I look at what is the best out right. there, what is the safest. And skydiving and the equipment used in skydiving is a real good example of really some of the top engineering principles. Mm -hmm. it, safe and simple. Right, lightweight, that kind of stuff. Well, let's yeah. talk about some of this gear here. This looks like something out of Star Wars, actually, <laughs> uh, Boba Fett or something. Um, but let's start with this. So this is um, an older camera and rig that you, this is what you started shooting with, is that correct? No, I, this is uh, one of the, the latest, or the, the first generation of the HD, the gotcha. high definition. So this is the rig. first HD camera. Yeah, you, you, try, you don't want to see the first ones I had. <laughs> it would be, uh, so talk us through this and sort of, uh, Walk us through how this works with uh, your helmet. And a lot of this stuff is um, custom made. Yes. It's all been machined specifically for you and for this helmet specifically. Is that right? That's correct. Uh, this was a first generation Sony high definition camera. Um, at that time, there was no commercial housings. And so there's a, a local gentleman a machinist that he custom designed this cage. Um, uh, we've, we've got it designed basically to hold it secure onto the helmet and to, to provide some protection. So if you're exiting the airplane or if you bump into other skydivers, you're not gonna damage the camera. So our goal is to keep it safe and to keep it stable on the helmet. Right. Um, this, this guy, like, just really quickly, it looks like you have, um, does this fit normally or is there a, a housing around this so that this lens is snug inside there? Actually, the way it, this is designed here, we have a, uh, this is an older generation, wide angle lens that's threaded onto this camera um, we've actually provided it with a, well, it's a rubber band, or you can call it a gasket. <laughs> okay. So with that gasket on there, this camera is pretty secure uh, into this housing. So when you, if you try to move it from side to side, it's pretty stable. But this on the front here has a little tab. It's just a piece of metal, and that actually goes into uh, another metal thing on the helmet. And then on the bottom here, um, there's a bunch of holes here where that bolts on to the helmet. Is that right? That's so correct it goes into and then bolted down and that's what secures that plate. So let's talk about the newer version. And so can you walk us through this rig and, and how it works? Sure, sure. What you see here is the housing. 
And yes, it's just Velcro. Uh, it's just a clamshell cage. Now this is plastic, so it's a little bit lighter. It's still fairly strong though. What we've had, we, we had to do is find a way to turn this on without flipping the monitor open. because It's hard to do that in free fall. Uh, we have a, um, a, a remote switch developed by a company called Hypoxic. So when you first press the button, it shows on standby. And this is in my direct field of view while I'm in free fall or about to climb out of the airplane. Uh, this shows it's on standby. I press this button again and it goes to red. And this means I'm live. I'm recording. And so once the skydive is done, I can reach up, press it one more time, and that would turn it off. Just like that. And so this guy here is your targeting radical, right? Is that yeah, that we is? call it a basically a concentric ring sight. And there's a few manufacturers who make those uh, for skydivers. And it's, it's basically, to, it's a concentric rings. It shows where you're directly on target with your, with your, um, with your, tar uh, with your target. Yeah, so it's sort of like, you know, in Star Wars where Luke was using the Force. <laughs> it just <laughs> comes down and yeah. there you go. Yeah, and you'll lie, before you get outside the airplane and on the ground, when you're setting up your camera system, you do your best to align up this ring sight with the vision of the camera. So you plug in a remote viewing port, you show it on this monitor, you have somebody to help you aim your camera, and you line up. This is a fully adjustable ring sight here. And so you loosen this, you adjust the ring to where it shows exactly the center of the screen. Uh, what you're seeing on the camera. So, um, you actually have, have done some things to the lens. So this is a Century Optics Wide Angle Adapter, and this is a .55, so you're seeing about double mm -hmm. what your normal lens would show. Is that correct? That's correct. So that's on here, and then I'm going to take this off so we can sort of show that there's more to it than just that. Um, first of all, we have a step-down ring. Mm -hmm. So this, to make sure this fits on this camera, there's a step-down ring so that the threading will work. And that, that's, that comes stock with most of these lenses because okay. the cameras are all, it uses a, a different thread size than, let's say, the older generation. Um, and most lenses, manufacturers of lenses, are aware of the different thread sizes, and so they usually include some of these step-down rings. Gotcha. And then this other ring here is something that you manufactured or had manufactured? I've had, man had that manufactured with the, uh, with the mounting system. So basically what this does is that's what the rubber band was on the other rig, is that correct? <laughs> yeah, it's a more sophisticated version of a rubber band. Right, and so that makes sure that that fits securely in that housing. When this clamp comes down, it cinches on this, this, loose, this collar here and it secures the camera. Right, and then also that makes sure that if anything were to happen with just some some shaking or jolting of this that doesn't damage your lens, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, so that's the video stuff. Now let's talk about, uh, this is a Canon 20D. So tell us how you've mounted this and um, you know what, what you get out of this. I mean, I'm curious how A, you mounted it, and B, what lens you use, and C, how do you take the pictures in the air hands-free? Okay, um, well, as you said, this is a Canon 20D, so it's an older generation digital SLR. So what you first do is start with a, uh, a mounting system. Uh, you look basically look you look for the lowest profile uh, mounting plates that you can find. So and that's that's mated with this plate on. This yes, screen. you have basically a male end and then a female end of this plate, and you secure it to. In this case, this is a magnesium right angle plate here, and um, some people will mount stills on top of the helmet. Uh, I prefer to mount it in front; so it keeps everything centered. Um, so once you you mount it, and it's just spring-loaded. Use a little extra bungee cord here. For these shots, I use a 24 prime. Okay. Some people use wide ang more, more wide-angle lenses, some people less. It totally depends on your personal preference and your flying style. Um, shooting with this type of lens, I can be close enough to be interactive with my subject if I want to go in and touch and fly in with them, um, but it keeps me further far enough away to where once formation starts to build, if we do larger size, I can pull away and still get everything in frame. And this, this 24 is roughly matched to this? Yes. So they basically have roughly the same angle of view, is that's, that right? That's correct. So when we look at the video, I have a good idea of what stills I've taken. And so your target is going to work for both still and video? That's correct. So we make sure that this viewfinder is aligned to both the still camera and the video camera. So how do you trigger and focus? Okay, well, we set this camera on AI servo, so we set it on autofocus. We specify just a point focus. We don't do the multi field. So, for center focus. point autofocus, AI servo, or for other like Nikons and everything, it's constant focus. So, it's always focusing. Correct. And what we have here is a remote bite, bite trigger. 
So, and this is designed for skydiving. This has been used a few times here. And what this is, I thread this and with tape and sometimes inside the helmet to, we attach this to the Canon remote trigger and we just put in the, plug it in the port here. And, and this is a custom made switch and just to clarify, what's, what's happening here is this cable is sort of like a pre-release cable for those of you that are familiar with it. And exactly. so when this is plugged in, it's actually uh, uh, emulating somebody pushing down the, uh, the, your shutter button halfway. Right. So it's always focusing. And so right now I can hear the, the lens focusing. And so with the center point, uh, center autofocus point, that's the fastest autofocus you have. Mm -hmm. And so it's always tracking. And so when you bite on that. When you, when you bite on this, basically it just starts shooting. Just goes. And you have this on, uh, you know, the drive mode where it's always going to be shooting, which Correct. is nice. Correct. Yeah, so you can do multiple. And normally you're shooting anywhere from, depending on what you're shooting, anywhere from 30 to 40 pictures per, per, per skydive. So you should bite and go. Yep, you just bite and go, and you can let off. And there's different types. There's the other switches to where you can thread it to a hand trigger. Um, I like to keep my hands free in case there's some skydiving problems. Um, other people will use a uh, bladder to where they actually uh, blow on it, or like a blow switch or a bladder. So there's several different designs. Um, this is just the design that I prefer. And it's, it's probably one of the most common designs. Well, there's the whole setup. Well, thank you so much for spending time with us today and walking us through that. Um, we have some of your footage here, so we're going to play out with uh, this is Craig falling from the sky. So thanks again for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you. Well, that's how Craig shoots while falling through mid-air. He uses a bunch of groovy gear. You can see more of his photos at the Adorama Learning Center. And remember, if you have somebody that you'd like us to interview on how they do that, you can send me a suggestion at askmarketadorama.com. Well, thanks for joining us. I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.